Hey guys, so tonight we're talking about the cell cycle, cell division, and apoptosis, which is something you may or may not have heard before. So let's get started. Now, in eukaryotic organisms, the cell cycle is very important. Uh, heritable information is passed to the next generation via processes that include um, the cell cycle and mitosis or meiosis plus fertilization. So this is how we are going to get our genetic information transferred from organism to organism and how we get the same DNA in all of our cells in our entire bodies. So. Um, from your AP guide, it, is, it says that the cell cycle is a complex set of stages that is highly regulated with checkpoints which determine the ultimate fate of the cell, and we'll talk about that. So you might remember from regular biology, we have um, a large part of the cell cycle which is called interphase. Now this is composed of three different parts, G1, S, and G2. And then following interphase, we have our uh, mitotic phase, or our cell division phase. And that's composed of mitosis and cytokinesis. Now, the big difference between mitosis and cytokinesis is that mitosis is the division of the nucleus of the genetic, genetic material, and cytokinesis is going to be our division of um, the actual cytoplasm and the cleavage furrow and everything when the cell actually cleaves into two new daughter cells. Oops, okay. Moving forward. So let's talk about interphase. Now, interphase is going to be uh, G1. S and G2. Now G1 is just growth and development of the cell. It's normal processes, however it's going to function. S is our synthesis phase, um, S phase for DNA synthesis, and this is where the DNA will replicate. Now remember, DNA replication happens before um, the cell can actually go into mitosis. DNA is not replicated during mitosis. And then G2 is preparation for cell division. So sometimes um, the organelles in the cytoplasm uh, might be replicating as well. It's growing enough. It's growing larger so it has enough of the cytoplasm to divide into two. So the cell cycle is directed by internal controls or checkpoints. Internal and external signals are going to provide stop and go signs at these checkpoints. Um, so if we go back and look at our there we go. If we go back and look at our uh, cell cycle right here, um, we see that we're going to have checkpoints before we can move on from G1 to S or from S to G2. And then finally, um, we'll talk about one in particular that is actually going to make sure that the cell does not move on from G2 into the mitotic phase until it is all ready to go. Keep doing that. Okay. So we talked about interphase. So MPF, this is our mitosis promoting factor. Now this is a specific um, cyclin dependent ki protein kinase complex. So let's take a look at what it looks like really quick. Um, so we have our cyclin, which is a special type of protein. This is cyclin B. Um, combined with this enzyme, our CDK, and then together this entire complex is called our MPF, or our mitosis promoting factor. Um, so what it's going to do is interact with various other proteins that will allow the cell to proceed from G2 into mitosis. So when this complex is together, it's going to initiate several different reactions that is going to allow the cell to proceed. So if we look at this diagram really quickly, we notice that we have an increased level of cyclin, and then which is that protein attached to this entire um, CDK complex. My graphs are all out of order here. Um, we have a spike in cyclin, and we see a spike in MPF activity right as mitosis begins. Again, the cyclin is going to spike right at the end of G2 so that we can have this complex doing its job in order to go into mitosis. So as our new cyclin builds up, we are going to have our cyclin combine with our cyclin-dependent protein kinase enzyme, and then we will have our MPF together. This is the complex of that cyclin and the CDK, and then we are able to go into mitosis from there. The cyclin is degraded, but the CDK is preserved because it is an enzyme. Enzymes are not broken down, and it can t continue if the cell needs to divide again. All right. So uh, you will need to know in this class the uh, direction and uh, sort of where and how the chromosomes are going, um, but you will not need to memorize specific stages of mitosis or meiosis by name, but you need to know in general what happens. So basically building on your knowledge from what you already know from regular biology, um, you will have to understand where the chromosomes are all going and what they're doing. So let's get my face out of the way over here. 
Remember, DNA replication happens before mitosis can occur, um, so this is in S phase. Once we have this chromatin strand replicated, it can condense into our chromosome form, which is like this X or butterfly shape that we commonly see depicted as a chromosome. Um, and then in our different phases of mitosis, these chromosomes are going to go into different portions of the cell. So in metaphase, they will line up at the cellular equator or the equatorial plate. They'll be pulled apart by sister chromatids at the centromeres where the spindle fiber fibers attach and then these sister chromatids will be pulled to opposite ends of the cell and then in the end when the nuclei divide we will have two diploid cells so it means two cells with a full set of chromosomes this is technically a diploid cell and this is a diploid cell so right here we have um, 2n and here we have 2n if we only had half the number of chromosomes we would call this an n cell all right so moving forward there we go let me get my first out of the way. Okay, so things to know. In mitosis, it's going to um, alternate with interphase in the cell cycle. So remember, mitosis is not the only part of the cell cycle. It's just one part where the nucleus is actually dividing the genetic materials being split into two and replicated. Excuse me, and uh, divided. Specialization of the cell is going to be when a cell specializes, um, it can enter a stage where it no longer divides or it can re-enter with appropriate cues or environmental factors. And we'll talk about examples of those later on. There we go. Okay. So again, mitosis passes a complete genome from the parent cell to the daughter cell. They're going to produce two genetically identical cells. Um, this process can, our bodies can be used for growth, repair, or in other organisms, asexual reproduction. But we have mitosis happening in most of our cells um, during our entire lifetimes. Let's talk about meiosis now. Meiosis is going to be used for, for production of gametes. Now gametes are sex cells and they only have half the number of chromosomes that a regular cell will have. So instead of having 2n number of chromosomes, they will have n. I know it's confusing with the notation, but we got to get this straight. So 2n is a full set of chromosomes. In humans, 2n equals 46 because we have a total of 46 chromosomes. Now n, just half the number of chromosomes, would be 23. So in one of our sex cells, we would only have 23 chromosomes. Now, meiosis is going to give us the ability to take one diploid cell and create a certain amount of daughter cells. Actually, this is an, not a great diagram because in most cases, a general type of meiosis, we would end up with four daughter cells that are not genetically similar. They have half the genetic material and they're going to be different. So, um, when we combine these two haploid cells, we can form a zygote, which is a fertilized egg, and then that egg can later on do mitosis again, mitosis, 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 and grow and develop as an embryo. Okay, so again, with our cycle, we are going to need to know what happens to the chromosomes in meiosis, but we won't necessarily need to remember all of the stages. Remember, there's like meiosis 1, meiosis 2, and then each of the phases like anaphase 1, anaphase 2. Um, so we start out with a full diploid cell, 2n set of chromosomes. The DNA replicates an interphase before we go into cell division, and then it will produce um, these you know, chromosome forms when it condenses. As it goes through the phases, what it'll do is a specific uh, part called crossing over where the different chromosomes exchange genetic material so we can have increased genetic variability. This is why siblings look differently. Um, you're going to have just a, a larger amount of genetic variation when we're able to do this because we're getting uh, a mixed uh, set of DNA from the parents. When these cells split up, we can get four haploids. Remember, this is half of what happened here with the diploid for haploid daughter cells that are not genetically identical. So let's look at our final meiosis diagram. I'm going to get my face out of the way. All right. So again, interphase is where the DNA actually repl replicates, and then that chromatin will condense in prophase one. And then prophase one uh, is going to be where that crossing over occurs and the exchange of genetic material happens. Um, metaphase, they're going to have our homologous chromosomes. So two chromosomes of the same type will align. And then the homologous chromosomes are pulled to opposite ends of the cell in anaphase one. In telophase 1 cytokinesis, we have that cleavage furrow, we split, the DNA decondenses, DNA recondenses in prophase 2. Now remember, there is no additional replication of DNA happening at this part of meiosis. So, uh, DNA recondenses in prophase 2, and then we're going to go metaphase, we're going to have this part of meiosis seem very similar to mitosis. The homo 
uh, excuse me, the sister chromatids will then separate instead of homologous chromosomes separating up here. Um, so this, again, looks very much like the regular stages of mitosis. And then in the end, we get four genetically different daughter cells with half the genetic material as the original parent cell. Phew. All right. Let's talk about the most fun part. Apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Now, Cells can commit suicide when they lack survival signals or when they detect ex extensive DNA damage. Um, so this is a good thing for the cells. The cells need to know how to how to do apoptosis because when we don't do apoptosis when we are supposed to, that's when we can run into problems like cancer where we have uncontrolled cell growth that can develop too much and, and become tumors in the body and create really bad health problems. But apoptosis is helpful for the cell, especially when there is extensively damaged DNA. There can also be cell murder, which is going to be getting rid of unneeded or potentially damaging cells if there's a problem with the immune system or something. Now we have apoptosis and necrosis. Um, necrosis is unplanned cell death. Um, Apoptosis is programmed cell death. Now, we can see uh, apoptosis uh, versus necrosis in a number of different ways. Uh, one of those ways is going to be what the, uh, the final results look like. Now, in apoptosis, we're going to have several different apoptotic bodies, and um, these organelles can still be functional. Necrosis, we're just going to have full lysis of the cell. So let's look at the, what this looks like in sort of a cycle. Oh, my favorite part of apoptosis and necrosis is we have things called blebs. <laughs> um, so let's look at it in our next slide here. There we go. Okay. Apoptosis, our program cell death. So we have a normal cell. Um, we're going to have a con uh, condensation of our chromatin, so our genetic material is going to condense. Um, we will have this membrane blebbing, and then we will sort of have our, our nuclear membrane collapse. Um, the entire membrane will continue to bleb even more, and then we're going to have our apoptotic apoptotic body formation, which is these tiny little uh, structures, and then those apoptotic bodies will lyse as well or burst open. We'll notice with necrosis on the other slide, we just have one larger form um, kind of bursting open and rupturing. All right. So that is it for today. Um, it was a lot, but remember, you don't need to memorize specifically each part of mitosis and meiosis, just need to know what the genetic result is of each and what happens to the chromosomes in each. And we're going to be talking about more about cancer and apoptosis later on in class. See you guys later.